So this question came through in a variety of ways, but it was explain the difference between yield, IRR, cash on cash, etc. So uh, good. <laughs> Oh, where to start? Okay, right. We have a new challenge. It's called uh, financial lingo. <laughs> okay, let me try and do this. Let me try and do this simply. Okay, so an unsophisticated way of looking at property is yield. And what yield is, is that it's basically the, the total rent that a property earns. Generally, yield is used in residential property. And it's the total income that a property earns. So let me give you an example. If I own a property in London, and I know you can't buy a property in London for hundred thousand pounds, so don't shoot me, but just go with my maths to keep it easy, okay? So I buy a property in London for hundred thousand pounds, and I'm earning a thousand pounds a month rent before costs. So before my mortgage, before my you know rates and taxes, my management agent, whatever, but I'm earning gross a thousand pounds per month. Are you all with me? I'm, I'm almost sure you all know you've either collected rent or paid rent. So you, you paid your thousand dollars uh, pounds. Obviously, there's twelve months in a year, so there's uh, that property is going to earn twelve thousand pounds per year. You with me? One thousand a month times twelve months, twelve thousand. The property I bought it for a hundred thousand pounds. So what is the yield? It's twelve percent. It's the total gross rental over the price of the property. 12%. Okay. Now, estate agents love to use uh, yield. Uh, property sales companies love to use yield. Property education companies love to use yield because you go and you go, I'm getting 12%. And the SMP is going, they're only at 8%. That's ridiculous. I should look at me, I'm getting 12%. But actually, you take off the mortgage, you take off the rates and taxes, you take off the management costs you take off the fact the tenant doesn't pay vacancies you take off maintenance i'm sure if any of you have owned a property that bloody bugger the thing up and you got to fix it you take all that off and now suddenly oh but i don't have twelve thousand dollars pounds in my pocket okay so it's a big difference gross and net gross is what you think you get and net is what you get so that's where sophisticated people use a lingo called cash on cash because now I gave you a hundred thousand pounds. I gave it to you. Look, I bought a house. Yeah, it's a hundred thousand pounds. I put it down. How much money did I get back this year? Well, if I only got six thousand five hundred and forty pounds, six point five four percent. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Cash on cash. So six point five four percent cash on cash over a hundred thousand pounds would be six thousand five hundred and forty pounds. Are you with me? The net that I'm putting in my pocket is six and a half thousand pounds. So yield is gross and cash on cash is net. It's what you actually put in your pocket. Gross is for salesmen. Cash on cash, sorry. Yield is for salesmen. Cash on cash is for investors. With me? You might have just learned the most powerful lesson of your life right now when it comes to investing. Okay, now, now I want to compare gold and I want to compare an ETF and I want to compare property. How the hell am I ever going to do it? They're all got different variables. I know Eugene's asked this. How do I go and get all the different data and metrics? And it's impossible. Like, where am I going to do it? How do I compare an apple with an orange with a banana? And now, Scott, you're telling me, hey, but I got 100 pounds. Where do I invest it? Or 100,000 pounds. Let's just keep the med for. I got 100,000 pounds. Where do I invest it? I don't know if I want apples. I don't know if I want oranges. I don't know if I want bananas. And I can't even compare them. I don't even know. Well, that's where internal rate of return came along, IRR. Now, internal rate of return has 27 different variables. And I'll share a little video with you. Maybe, Shane, if you can find it um, where I said it's the best kept secret in the financial world. Because what it does, it takes the 27 variables. So it takes time value of money. It takes interest rates. It takes inflation. It takes the capital growth you're going to get. It takes the rental return. But the net amounts, the cash on cash, the physical cash you, you actually make. 
And it takes all of that into account over the period. So some investments might be one year, some might be five years, some might be 10 years. Like I said to you, there's 27 different variables. With all due respect, and I think I'm fairly good at this stuff. Sorry if I sound arrogant, but I think I am. I don't know how to do the IRR. Like I've never once taken all 27 variables and tried to figure it out. Like go literally Google IRR formula and it looks like you're doing a PhD. Probably someone could do it, but not me. Okay. The way I do an IRR is I get Excel and you use the IRR formula and you literally put in the metrics and it figures it out for you. Okay. And as long as you know how to use Excel, then you can get IRR. As long as you can trust the partners and as long as they're giving you the right information, you don't even have to work out the IRR. Because if it says the IRR, let me show you here quickly, is 10.55%, then you know that's the IRR. Okay. So now you're comparing, now you can go and compare an apple with an orange and a banana. Because let's say this apple is at a 10.5% and the banana is at a 7% and the orange is at a 16%. Now you can compare an apple with an orange with a banana, um, taking into account capital growth, taking into account income, plus 25 other variables, inflation, interest rate, time, et cetera. Um, and that's why it's the most powerful metric in the world, because you can literally compare any asset its risk and its return with each other. Now, why don't they teach us to any of this to any of us? Well, because if you did the IRR on the crap they sell you, you wouldn't want to buy it. Sorry to be direct. I'm allowed to do it in the VIP environment because none of you are going to tell anyone. <laughs> I did not answer your question. There it is. Yield, cash on cash, IRR. 